What's up guys, it's Sip, and in this video I'm going to be showing you my Quan's build, my Ancient Beast build, my Seuss build. The point is, I'm going to be showing you an amazing build that will support all of your needs. My deck is composed of a Health Potion, Mana Potion, Strike Token, Assassin's Sword, Adam and Edge, Honor of the Pure, 2 Wind Scarber's Blade, Temper Blade, and an amulet of the better end. So you want to start off with a health potion, mana potion, and a strike token. This will support uh, if you're in need of health or in need of mana and you will get a boost in damage. The first skill that you're going to get is called Gift of the Heavens. This is what's going to make you and your teammates more sustainable in battle. Because each and every time that you're close to your teammates and they or you land a hit, you're going to receive a portion of your health back up because, well, that's what lifesteal is. Your first order of business is going to be to destroy the enemy minions. You can go into the jungle if you want and it will give you the necessary XP you need to level up. But I personally think Huang is not built for being a jungle character. I personally think that he should be on the lane attacking and defending. Now your next skill is going to be Light of the Heavens. This is going to be your main attack skill. This is what's going to be causing damage and at the same time it's going to be giving you some energy and physical armor bonus which will make you more sustainable in battle. Now as for your third skill, you're going to go ahead with Judgments of the Heavens. This is what's going to isolate and slow the enemy, plus you can part it up with Light of the Heavens to do an additional damage, or you could just leave the sword, throw the sword somewhere, and then use your special to teleport where the sword is. So it's a great way to slow down and catch up to the enemies, or you could use the skill to do some amazing damage. Now if I had to give you an order or a list of which skills you should always upgrade, it would be number one, Gifts of the Heavens. This is the skill that you wanna be that you wanna be upgrading whenever you can because it's what's gonna make you and your teammates more sustainable in battle. Now for the second skill, you're gonna go ahead with Light of the Heaven. This is gonna be your main AoE damage of the skill and it's gonna even increase your energy and physical armor. So you can be pretty damn sustainable if with this skill. Now your third skill is going to be Judgments of the Heavens. This is what's going to slow and isolate the enemies. And it's always a good skill to have, but I will leave it for last if you want to upgrade something. Now that you're level 5, you're going to go ahead and upgrade Fury of the Heavens. This is what's going to be making insane damage, and you can even use it to escape battles if you think you're too compromised. Now that you have enough points to spend, let's go back to base. And the first card that you're going to be getting is called Assassin's Ward. This is going to give you two wards which will possibly prevent the enemy from ganking you. Plus you will receive an additional lifesteal, physical penetration, or physical damage bonus. This is, this is a great card to start off with because the enemy team will not be expecting you to have all of those traits in the beginning of the match. Now Kwong is a hero that's very sustainable thanks to the lifesteal and does a pretty good basic amount of damage. But he can't possibly go against a ranger inside a tower by himself so it's good if you have someone to stay close by so that he can help you against the enemy ranger. Now that you have enough points to spend, let's go back to the tower once again. We're gonna go into our assassin's board and you're gonna upgrade it with a greater drain, increasing your lifesteal even more. Over at middle, I see an opportunity to get Pelika. She was a little bit overextended, so I decided to cause some damage over her. I thought maybe I could kill her, but apparently she has high guard and her tower is pretty close. She managed to evade me for now, but let's see what happens in the future. Over here, she was bugging me too much, so I popped my special, I popped my sword, and I managed to do 271 damage with my special. So. I take the final blow and well, Balik is gone. And as I said before, you when you are choosing or where you're playing Kang, you should always have a teammate by your side. Kang is not a chimera that you can just go around and 1v1 everyone. It's definitely possible, but it's not suggestible. Now that you have enough points to spend, you're gonna go back to base, you're gonna go into your assassin's ward, and you're gonna fully upgrade the card by adding a strike. Now my mistake here, as you see I had 2 points so I decided to go ahead and take out a strike token and add another card. Now I could have taken the health potion and mana potion but I already have a decent amount of damage so I decided to go ahead and take out my strike token and add a temper plate which is going to give me enough armor and health to be more sustainable in battle. Over here I saw Murda getting attacked so I decided to help out my pal Chimera and get an assist. 
In the beginning I said that Kuang is a hero that's meant for laning and not jungling and that's true. But if you see that the lanes are too compromised, you could just go into the jungle and help yourself out. Now since you have enough points to spend, you're gonna go back to base and upgrade your temper plate with a greater guard. This should be enough guard to sustain you since you're in mid game, you really don't need so much more. So you're gonna go ahead and add a wind carver slate to give you 6.5 physical damage and 6.5 and 5.5 attack speed. Now you may be thinking that this is a tricky move, but temper plate is already giving you enough armor as it is. So if you upgrade it with a greater guard, you should be okay on mid game. So that's why I added the wind carver's blade. We're on mid game and what I needed wasn't guard at this point. What I needed was damage. Over here I see Belika about to kill Gideon so I go ahead and pop my sword, Judgment of the Heavens and slow her down, making it possible for Gideon to escape out alive. Now that you have enough points to spend, you're gonna go back to base. When you have 24 points, you should be at the position I'm playing right now where you have two cards and you're gonna go ahead and upgrade temper plate completely by discarding the health potion and adding another guard increasing your physical armor to 220 plus giving you 100 points of health this is gonna give this is gonna make you damn sustainable plus you're gonna have that lifesteal working miracles at this point of the game you can say you're unstoppable now that you have enough points to spend 27 to be precise you're gonna go back to base and you're gonna upgrade your wind covers blade now why did I upgrade my wind covers blade or even put it into this deck. Quan is a hero that needs speed to make that passive pop out and at the same time you need damage and the only card that could fill those requirements was the wind carver's blade. Plus you're gonna go ahead and, and upgrade the wind carver's blade with a major kinetic, a strike and a kinetic. So over here the enemy got the orb prime so we decided to back off since the orb prime was very close to where we were. And unfortunately for us, the enemy team was a little bit more faster, don't ask me why, and they managed to catch up to me. So it's a Severok, it's not a Severok, there are a lot of players actually. So I pop my special as an escape method to get out, but the Severok won't, ki won't quit, he keeps getting close, plus I have the Rampage getting in close too. Uh, Chimera goes and tries to save me, but unfortunately there were 4 guys or 5 guys right there. And they were more than enough to kill us. I try to help Chimera by popping my sword and making them go go slow or making or stunning them in other words. But that still wasn't enough to get them. They managed to kill Chimera and I and well that was a fatal mistake. Now that you have enough points to spend, 30 to be precise, you're gonna go back to base and upgrade the wind carver's blade. You're gonna fully upgrade it by discarding the mana potion and adding the kinetic. This is going to make that passive pop out because you're going to be getting some extra speed and the more speed you get the more faster you get your health back up plus you're going to be getting some insane amount of damage. I see some action happening on right lane so I decided to get close to them. I go, I go with my pal Chimera and Gideon on my back, Gideon stops them and I get stopped as well but I throw my sword and I use my special to get close. I do some extra damage, I get some uh, some bonus uh, armor and physical armor and Gideon pops his special doing some insane damage Rampage stops the special oh, he almost dies uh, but that still shouldn't be enough to get us to not get close Rampage jumps once again stopping the enemy Bella guy I believe and Rampage is trying to escape but no matter I'm really close so I stop him he starts trying to hit me trying to see if uh, he can kill me but Chimera and Gideon and Murdoch gets very close to him and we managed to get out with two or three kills I'm not even sure <laughs> now that you have enough points to spend 33 to be precise once again you're gonna go and add an amulet of the better and this is gonna give you 6.5 physical damage and 100 points of health plus if you fully upgrade it you get 200 bonus uh, to a uh, 200 bonus health so that if you put that up with temper plate you should be a piece of a tank and a beast of a fighter once you finish adding the rest of the cards. Over here at middle lane the enemy was getting pretty cocky they thought they were gonna destroy middle tower but my sustainability in battle managed to keep me alive plus my damage output was really nice so I popped my special I popped my skills and we managed to defend middle tower. I'm right now rolling 1-1-12. Hell yeah. Now that you have enough points to spend, you're going to go back to base and you're going to be upgrading your amulet up the better. And you're going to upgrade it with your major strike, increasing your physical damage to 84. 
even in late game, you want to be laning. You don't want to be in the jungle being as a Chimera. You're not Chimera. You're Quan. You're a character that's going to be pushing and defending the lanes. But now that you have enough points to spend, you're going to go and upgrade your amulet of the better and increasing your damage to the 106. Now, since the enemy lanes were compromised, I went into the jungle to gather up a little bit of XP. As I said before, if the lanes are compromised, just go into the jungle. It's not suitable, but it should do the work. Let's go ahead and upgrade our army a little bit better and increasing our health to 2,500. Plus, you have that temper plate working miracles and reducing the amount of damage that you receive. Plus, the wind covers blade and the assassin's ward. You should be pretty balanced by now. Now that you have enough points to spend, you're going to go back to base and you're going to go ahead and add another Wind Carver's Blade. Why in a Wind Carver's Blade? Well, at this point of game, you're going to be needing more speed because the more speed you have, the more health you get back. So, Wind Carver's Blade is an ex excellent option for attack and speed at the same time. Over here, I was passing on mid and I saw the enemy attacking Orb Prime, so I decided to help myself out and try to see if I could get the Orb Prime before them, but that didn't work out. Either way, the Rampage we all started to engage, but he had so much health and so much damage. And not so much damage, but so much health and so much guard that we couldn't actually kill him at first. But even all of us were starting to hit him right now, and he couldn't, he wouldn't die. He almost escaped, but thanks to Chimera, he, Chimera jumped and actually managed to stop him for a bit. Over here, I see Belaga, I use Light of the Heavens, and then I pop my special and do the kill. Here, unfortunately, I died because I thought my teammates were behind me, but unfortunately, they left and I was left alone. And as I told you, Kang is a character that needs, uh, it could be a 1v1, but he's more of a, uh, I need other teammates around me. And I couldn't take the enemy's Severoth plus uh, Murdoch by myself. Let's go back to base and put three more points. We're gonna go into another Wing Carver's Blade. We're gonna upgrade with a major strike, increasing our physical damage to 130. If you see that the enemy lanes are compromised, you're gonna go in lane once again. Quan, let's go back to base. You're gonna go and upgrade your Wind Carver's Blade completely, increasing your physical damage to 136 and your attack speed, attack speed to 179. Now you can pretty much take out even our prime by yourself because your attack speed is so high that you'll get your your life back in no second. Now let's go back to base since you have some more points to spend. And the next card that you're gonna be adding it's Honor of the Pure or Adam and Ash. Depending on the situation you're at, if you need more health and more than uh, more uh, defense, go with another of the pier. But if you need more damage, go with Adam and Edge. Unfortunately, I couldn't get to 60 cards, but I got pretty close. So now you have a general idea of the order that you need to place the cards and upgrade them. This deck parts up with uh, Kang because you you got speed, and the more faster you hit, the more health you get back. You got defense, which you need in Kang because Kang is not a fighter that you need to just focus on damage completely and you got a basic amount of damage so it's a good deck really balanced and really sweet if you enjoyed leave a like and if you didn't leave a dislike thank you for watching here i'm going to be presenting you a deeper guide of how i show why i chose these cards so the first card that you're going to go with the prime card is going to be the centurion you're going to need that extra 1000 that uh 1000 health you really don't need that 75% damage. The first three cards that you're gonna put are Health Potion, Mana Potion, and the Strike Token. After you're done with that, you're gonna go ahead and put the Assassin's Ward with Greater Drains and two Normal Strikes. This is going to increase your damage and at the same time you're gonna get a boosted lifesteal. Next card is gonna be Temper Plate. You're gonna receive that extra defense bonus and make you more sustainable in battle. Next, you're going to be adding Wind Carver's Blade with a Major Kinetic, Kinetic, and a Strike. This is going to make that passive truly pop out, and at the same time, you'll be receiving that extra damage. Another Wind Carver's Blade, for the same reason, make that passive truly pop out and get some extra damage. And next, you're going to go ahead and add the Amulet of the Better End. This is going to give you a bonus of 400 health, if I'm not mistaken. Plus, you put two major strikes in there and you do an amazing amount of damage. The next card and the final one will be depending on your choice. If you're in a situation where you need more health and defense, go with another of the pure. Or and if you're in a situation where you need more attack, go with Adam and Edge. That's it for the video, guys. I hope you have enjoyed. Leave a like if you did. Leave a dislike if you didn't. Comment down below uh, on how it could get better or how could I improve this deck. Thank you for watching. And I hope you get some you got some value out of this build. Peace out.